there, Di here. I've been having lots of fun just recently with my brushos and I made the bits and pieces that I'd created, the backgrounds, into some cards and I thought I'd just show you. I did video some of these but I'm not bothering because there are so many out there already and um, a lot of good videos so you don't really need to see me doing the same things. One lady that I've particularly found several great techniques was Kylie Patel who's on YouTube, an Australian YouTuber. She's got a blog and a craft forum as well. I'll put the details below in the description box but several of these techniques were directly from her site and I'll tell you. This little one I was just, um, I nearly threw it out because it was just a, a bit of a mess but it was the background that I was particularly interested in. Um, I embossed this flower image just with white embossing powder and then applied the brushes over the top and what I particularly like about this one is the background, the depths and colours and that took several layers of, of sprinkles. Um, if I did it again I wouldn't bother about embossing and trying to add floral images to it, I would just simply use it as a background because it did create um, a lovely um, variegated background. Um, and I was about to bin it and I thought no if I do some doodling on it and add a few swirly do's and bits and pieces um, it might just pass muster to send to someone as a as a little note card. So that's what I did, put the little ladybird on it. Um, so that's that one. I also did one which was quite interesting uses, using the brushos by simply putting a little bit of water in one of my little palettes and just a spray of water and a tiny sprinkle of the brushes and mixing it up like a watercolour um, and brushing it on and that worked really well I was pleased with that you can tone it down you can get the full depth add a little bit more powder to increase the depth mix the colours it worked really well I I do have some cheap watercolours, but I don't use them terribly often just to paint. But I really enjoy doing that and I'll do some more of that. Um, I'm having, I haven't got a sample of that because again I binned it. The, I'm trying to find the proper way to sort of coat the surface so that I can protect it to use it on a card. Um, I've got some spray that I'm using at Fixative. Um, but for that sample, it simply didn't work. So it's gone the way of all bad experiments. This is a little one, um, and again, it's the background that I'm really showing off here. It was a pretty ordinary finish on the card, um, but the background was lovely. And that was using spray starch. Just spray the watercolour paper with a goodly layer of spray starch and which I haven't used since um, PTS days when I started nursing mind you. And we had to have little white caps that needed to be starched or matron would be on our tail. Um, so it was just this. Um, I've got enough here to last me 20 years probably but there you go. It did make a really nice background and that was simply by spraying it thickly with the spray starch while it's all bubbling away, sprinkle on colours and in this case I used the turquoise and the leaf green and then like the acrylic background from mixed media morsels, cover it with a crumpled up piece of glad wrap, scrunch it around and leave it to dry. A very nice effect, I'd do that one again and again, it's, um, it was very effective, I really like that. So I just finished off with a couple of gold embossed flowers because I never use those wood embellishments. They just sit and look woodenly at me and I feel guilty so I did use a couple. Now these five, oh this, this background with the starch was one of Kylie's um, techniques and this, these were Kylie's techniques, all of these. Um, using stencils. You simply lay the stencil over your piece of watercolour paper 
sprinkle it quite conservatively with the um, the brush her powder, give it a light spritz, lift up the stencil and Bob's your uncle it's done. This one is little, I think it's a kind of carved um, rose stencil and you can see um, it's quite grainy, it's quite splotchy but I really like it. The one good thing about this I might not, oh yes I do, is when you lift the stencil off, if you lay it on a piece, I just used ordinary cardstock here, the Nina Solar White cardstock, and you get the reverse from the top of the stencil, so it's not wasted. Um, I'll use these in another card. So that one was quite interesting. This one was Tim Holtz stencil, and I used, oh this one was just um, purple and and scarlet brush. This one was turquoise and purple and using one of the Tim Holtz um, Tim Holtz uh, stencils and I did get a reverse image of that but it's not nearly as effective as the previous one. This little one, again another Tim Holtz stencil, the little little squares, um, was yellow, I think, no, I think it was just leaf green and turquoise and maybe some yellow. Um, quite effective once again and that was the, the uh, print I took from the top of the stencil. This little one was, I'm not sure who that stencil's by, it's a little square number. Um, and that was just green and yellow. Really liked that one, how it turned out. I've, I've turned these three into cards for my grandsons, so they're extraordinarily bright. But um, all the better for that. This one was, um, well, I'm quite pleased with the way that text turned out. Um, it was quite, it's a 12, 12 inch stencil, it's a big one, I think it's a Kaiser Craft with text. I don't have a smaller text one which I'd like but I was really pleased and I just sprinkled that in sort of rainbow layers and sprayed it. Um, again it's a bit blurred but for me these are very very colourful. And I was really pleased with the way they turned out. Now these three, this is again, is one of Kylie's techniques that I hadn't really thought of and it was using glossy paper. And you simply sprinkle um, these two anyway. For the butterfly, you sprinkle a, have a small piece of paper, sprinkle the brush or powder onto your um, work mat spritz it with water, smooch the little piece of cardstock in big enough to cut out. I think Kylie used butterflies in hers and I really didn't have anything else suitable so I used a butterfly as well. For the larger pieces, the background piece, you simply add a few of the crystals to the prepared piece of paper, smooch it with water and wait for it to dry and a very pretty effect using glossy cardstock. Uh, so that was those. And this little one, I had um, another piece, a smaller piece of quite heavily pigmented um, using the purple and so I simply added it to the back, used the die cut um, negative and this little piece, the thanks, was cut out of a bit just from the edge of that piece where it was less pigmented. I'm quite pleased with that. I also haven't put one on that, but on these, most of these, with some of the off cut from the same um, piece, I found enough to cut out some tiny hearts. Um, simply by the cutting out the bits that I'd trimmed off, 
I've got a nice little collection of coloured bits just cut out with my little Stampin' Up punch. So that worked pretty well. I've got a nice collection of the negative pieces, slightly paler, just on ordinary cardstock to use for backgrounds and other bits and pieces. I've got a goodly collection of cards that are way, way brighter than my normal dull little numbers. Uh, the other thing I did, you can see it on this one, but I didn't use the other one. The when I mixed up the colours in the um, in the little palette to use as watercolours, I simply combined. For this one was red and purple, so I just used what was left on a piece of watercolour paper and then cut with a dye the word out. And the same with this. This was blue and yellow and cut out the happy from that. So nothing was wasted, even the little off cuts from the from the um, watercolour paper we used. I've still got a few embellishments. I've got some more backgrounds to use. And I've got a heap of cards to send off. So, all good. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye now.